Hello, I'm Tycat and welcome back to another third channel Scoot and Talk video. Today I'm renting an electrical scooter from Lime. Lime is always my go-to e-scooter company, mostly just because I it's it's hard to download apps for all the different e-scooters. But today I'm going on my first ever legal e-scooter ride in London. That's right, I won't be fined just for riding this. Instead I'll be fined for parking on the street uh, pavement or cycle bays and it, it makes it very clear I've got to do that everywhere here but also in the app. Um, but yeah, I'm actually lying to you when I say this is my first e-scooter ride because I'm actually using this as an opportunity to tell you about my first ever e-scooter ride because I thought it would be a similar enough thing. By the way, this is such a terrible place. Like, where am I, where am I meant to ride this that isn't the pavement or a, or a road? Because it says use cycle lanes where possible and you know what? Life is hard. I guess, I'm, I, guess I literally do have to cross the road if I want to I don't even, like, I, there's not even a cycle lane or anything around here. Whatever, you know, the point of this video is to tell you about my first e-scooter experience and why this is the dumbest concept in the world. Uh, I, I think having, having to rent, you know, re renting things instead of buying is a great choice to make when you want something temporarily. Being forced to rent instead of buying is very, uh, okay, I'm going to wait for the ambulance. Very loud ambulance. And then I guess I'm just going to scoot out into traffic. You know, let's see if I die, am I right? Oh god, okay, that, that van's gonna get me. The van's gonna get me. I'm not even dead. So yeah, this is a Lime electrical scooter. It is, uh, it goes up to 15.5 miles per hour. It has two brakes, actually. One on the right, one on the left. Do you want me to show you those right now? They're pretty powerful. Um, and um, yeah, you've always got to test your brakes for you on a scooter. Okay, so I'm finally on a road. <laughs> that took like a couple of minutes, both of which I had to pay for, by the way. And I'd like to talk uh, partially about the whole, uh, you have to rent these, you cannot own these. But first I'd like to talk about the rental experience because that's one of the most interesting things to me. Um, if you would like to ride an e-scooter, the only legal way is to uh, use one of these apps, Lime or one of the other ones. And uh, so you have to pay per minute. You cannot own an e-scooter, you can only rent an e-scooter temporarily. And you know, that's, that's totally fine. Uh, it's a way for the government to trial it, you would say. But let me tell you what the experience is actually like when you download the app. Because first of all, before you can rent one of these, you need to put in your provisional license. And it's funny because if you look ahead of me, that's a Lime e-bike. You don't need to put in your provisional license to ride one of those. Those also go 15.5 miles per hour. They also have the same limitations on battery and everything else. Same, same brakes. Everything is the same, with the one key exception being you have pedals, and so no license required. It's very strange, in my opinion. But, um, it's, it's so, uh, you know, you have to put in your license first of all. You have to send your license to a third party company to do whatever the hell they want with. Um, <laughs> and so, you know, that now, now that detail is in the Lime system forever. And then, once you put in your license and a company uh, of mysterious intent now has it, um, you have to do something which I think was quirky. You have to do this little quiz about how you ride an e-scooter. And um, <laughs> just for fun, as you can see right here, I answered every single question deliberately wrong. And it's fine, as long as you then answer it right, it counts entirely the same. And uh, you know, there's a lot of fun ones in there. Like, of course you should get multiple riders on a scooter. It's the rules are as many people fit on the scooter or as many people as you're allowed to have. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. Um, so yeah, this is scary. There's a van behind me and a sick horse in front. But, um, yeah, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's funny. You have to go through this entire uh, quiz test thing. Um, and then, so, uh, after that, you're paying per minute to ride the scooter uh, from the moment that, you know, you hit pay. Um, plus, you're paying a one pound fee to unlock. So, um, in my example, uh, I actually downloaded Lime Prime just to avoid that one pound fee. So, that's another 7 99 a month um, on top of the 16 pence per minute. But then, once you've done that, you can officially ride an e-scooter. And it's really great. It's really fun. Look at the speed I have right here. I'm going so fast right now. This is the way to cross the city. 15.5 miles per hour is not an arbitrary limit. It is definitely the useful speed at which everyone wants to go all of the time. And see, now because I'm riding a, a legal e-scooter, police won't even stop me. It is a delightful change to see. Um, that's just a whole van of police officers right there. Um, as you can imagine, very useful. So I'm actually going to back a little bit here, just uh, so I'm not weirding out the guy in front while talking about the fact that and then when you want to drop this thing down, uh, so it can only be picked up in designated cycle bays. You can't pick it up everywhere like you can with an e-bike. Um, but then if you want to drop these things down, it can also only be dropped off in specific places. Again, unlike an e-bike, I'm sorry if there's water on the camera. I didn't expect it to rain. I know I live in the UK and I don't expect it to la rain. What's wrong with me? But um, yeah, basically, uh, I, uh, you have to drop it in a designated cycle bay. And let me show you my, what my experience was like for that, because 
I just, I was trying so desperately to put it down in the cycle bay. It was in the cycle bay, I could confirm. With GPS, it was in the cycle bay, and it was saying, nope, you have to park this in a cycle bay. Uh, in, sorry, in an e-scooter bay. They're very different to cycle bays, because e-scooters are very different as a form of technology, damn it. Um, this one's so terribly slow, by the way. I, it has to be broken. Look at the guy ahead of me, how much speed he's got. And then look at me, trending along here, paying 16 pence a minute to go much slower than every vehicle on the road. But, um, so yeah, parking was a pain, and I pay 16 pence per minute for every minute until eventually it did lock. And let me just clarify, by the way, it never did lock. Um, what ended up happening is I just left it there, you know, fully unlocked so someone could steal it, go on their way. Um, and then after about half an hour, Lime ended it automatically. And then I had to go and request to their support for a refund because I'd been paying for a ton of time I wasn't using. So long story short, renting an e-scooter is a much worse experience than owning one. Because if you own one, here's the experience. You press go, and then when you get somewhere, you fold it up or you can lock it somewhere. I, I'm seeing more and more people locking e-scooters in places. And I just think to myself, like, man, that is, that is some balls that you have to do that, right? Like, <laughs> leaving an e-scooter with a valuable, you know, like, multi-hundred pound battery in a uh, public place. That is, that is, uh, again, I, 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 I wish I trusted my neighbors enough to do that. Not my neighbors, but like, my neighbors, uh, metaphorically speaking, in the city sense. Is this a bike lane? It looks like, oh, it's a person lane. Is there anything stopping me from, you know, we're, we're just not gonna ride in it. We'll be a good, good person. No riding in the people lane. Um, but yeah, so, uh, it's a terrible experience to rent compared to just you ride your e-scooter somewhere, then you ride it back. And um, honestly, I think renting versus buying, uh, a lot of people always point to this famous quote by um, the, uh, I think it's like the Brandenburg Council or something. It's, it's like a World Economic Forum. Um, and uh, at, that, at that forum, they're like, um, you know, renting versus owning is clearly the future. You will own nothing and you'll be happy. Uh, people always use that as the like conspiracy theory example um, of why, um, you yeah, know, that's, that's the conspiracy theory example about, like, there are so many police today. Glad I'm riding a legal e-scooter at my own perils. But um, like, uh, I, personally, I don't think renting is always bad. I think renting as a choice is actually a very good thing. Most people don't want to own something all the time, um, you know, like, uh, and then even beyond, even beyond like what you want versus what you can do. Should I be overtaking these buses? I think I should be, but there's so many of them. Should we just, ah, you know, it's fine, I'll wait. Um, I'll just pay my 16 pence a minute while I'm doing nothing here. Um, I actually think that renting versus buying is a really great decision in a lot of places because it allows the same, this same e-scooter I'm riding right now has been ridden by probably a dozen other people this week. And that's really cool that a dozen people can ride it, whereas if I bought this e-scooter myself, I would have used it zero times this week because I hate it. Um, it's not very good at anything. <laughs> and um, so I guess um, the logical next point I should uh, dive into is like, um, this is a dangerous scheme. Um, oh God, oh, the e-scooter is, okay. I guess I've gone somewhere I'm not meant to. It has locked itself up. Um, <laughs> so this is dangerous by itself, but obviously um, it just decided that I can't ride the e-scooter anymore because I've gone somewhere that's outside the range, maybe? I don't know, what is the range? It didn't tell me I was about to hit it. I'm just, I'm in the city of London. This is like the financial capital of the, what? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna check the app. I'm gonna see if, uh, if they're mad with me or something. Um, okay, so according to the app, I am in a, oh no, I'm in an entirely fine place. There's, there's no reason it should have stopped just then. It just did. I'm, I'm glad that happened while I was on a cycle lane and not on the road. And it's not wanting to, no, oh, okay, there we go. This is, this is wonderful. It doesn't want to pick up speed again. And so on my second, East could ride. Ignoring the fact that I'm riding a vehicle that I'm not familiar with, every single scooter will be slightly different. Um, even if they get all the same model, which again, uh, right now is not a guarantee. Am I just, we're gonna ride this like a push scooter, but pay 16 pence for the privilege? Yes, yes I am. Uh, oh, there we go. Oh, so it really, it must've been a geo-locked area. That's so strange. That's incredibly strange. I feel like I've been here before. Whatever, okay, so don't go left on this street or I die. Actually, I just want to see if that was random or if that was uh, uh, geolocking related. Like, are they, are they forbidding me from doing that? Because, okay, let's go. Same thing, same thing. I'm going, I'm going, I'm going. It's good, it's wonderful. There's no warning in the app that I shouldn't be going here. And so I just can, okay. It just turned off for a minute to remind me who's really in control, I guess. But yeah, um, it's much more dangerous. Ignoring all the weird rules 
about zones that will slow you down. Again, you don't, you don't have to slow down. It's not like a speed limit sign where you slow down when it's safe to do so. You are forced to slow down by the magical fairies in the cloud. Um, and then sometimes you're forced to stop apparently, which again, actually for some areas makes sense. Like if it's a busy pedestrian thoroughfare and you don't want people on East Coast riding through and scaring them, I guess there's some sense in warning the rider and then if they don't correct themselves in a minute, just stopping them and, or maybe, or even better, like let them ride there, but be like, you are about to be fined or some, some terrifying uh, message like that, you know? Um, there are, there are lots of solutions. Oh, okay, I think it's stopped again. No, <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, no, it's just slowing down. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's an incredible, incredible safety um, issue having an e-scooter that you're not in control of. Imagine if like we did vehicles that way, um, how people would react to that. Um, and then even beyond that, it's like, so they did a one year trial where you could only rent e-scooters. And then after the one year trial, um, they'd either ban them entirely and they'd pick, kick the rental schemes off their, um, they'd kick the rental schemes off their thing, or they would allow them to be used privately and then you could get back into the private e-scooter game. Then what they did is um, they spent about a year debating which scooters would be allowed in London. Um, again, this is all going off the source of uh, people who worked on the procurement process of like, oh yeah, so they had to pick the right handlebar height and they had to pick the right weight. And they, they, they went for a lot of different, this is interesting, I wanna go this, oh, okay. No, the e-scooter's dead. I don't know why it's dead, but it's dead. <laughs> Which again, very safe to be doing right here in the middle of the city of London. Oh no, it's going again. No, it's not. I don't know for sure. Um, but yeah, so um, they spent about a year procuring it. And then, so they only had two months before the trial would end. And suddenly they said, oh, we're gonna actually extend the trial by another nine months, just so we get a full year of our trial. It's like, you spent nine months not opening the trial and then you're demanding by being slow that everyone else should slow down for you. It's, oh. <laughs> Is that okay? What just happened there? I, I wonder. Um, there's like a, a whole ton of police around today. It's very fascinating, actually. Um, <laughs> you know, I, uh, I, I, have this, I had that deep fear in me the whole time that he just stopped me and be like, oi, I don't like that. And you know, I don't care what laws are. That's not what my job is. Uh, you know, police officers aren't lawyers. They're, you know, they're agents of force, right? And, and a lot of the times that force is used in ways that people find to be societally acceptable. Um, and that's a, that's a magical uh, thing we could talk about another time. Uh, and sometimes uh, it's used as a way to power trip and to be like, yeah, you know, we've worked out this way. Um, I don't want to dive like, I'm not, I'm, this is like almost conspiracy sounding. So I'm going to be, be very clear that it probably is just a very large coincidence. But um, if you look at my two, uh, look at the two big passions um, that have hit people regarding policing recently that are like directly intersecting with my life, it seems. It is, um, you know, COVID policing and it's e-scooter policing. And both of those cases, you know, e-scooter riders are disproportionately, at least in London, um, likely to be a minority of some form, an ethnic minority. You know, I myself an Asian, but I don't even look it. But um, like, uh, it, it is a very common thing because it's a cheap way to get around the city without requiring a driving license. Uh, people, people love that, as it so turns out. Um, and so, um, but, you know, you look at the, oh my God, it just keeps, <laughs> it keeps decelerating by itself. I wanna find a, I'm gonna find a parking spot as soon as I can. I have to pull out the app, by the way, to do that, which is illegal to do while well, riding on one of these things. And I have to, or I have to ride around aimlessly and just pray that I find one of these little boxes in which I can park this, which I might not be able to, okay, I'm being slowed down. Okay, it's, it's over, it's game over. This is, this is the end of the scooter ride. But then you also look at the, um, the exact same thing where it's like, uh, you know, requiring, um, you know, let's say a vaccination to do base tasks, right? Uh, which, which groups of people are least likely to have been vaccinated, right? And it's like, so those are the two things people are very heavy on enforcing, even people who are generally in favor of, ah, I found one, those people's rights. And um, I don't know, it's an interesting reminder of like, we, um, we have, we, we, some, we shift the goalposts on our thinking sometimes. Okay, so now we, now we got to lift this up. There we go. And then we got to go on the app because there's no way to park these manually. You have to do it via the app. And then you say end. And then once you've hit end, oh, it just, just didn't allow me to. You hit end again and it's saying,
Okay, so we're gonna hit end one more time. Nope, it's not doing anything. <laughs> it just, it does if it, see, it thinks I'm over there because the GPS is buggy, but I'm actually, I just wanna confirm, so you can read this, e-scooter and cycle hire, ESBS1 cannot, cannot end the ride. <laughs> Which means now I'm on the hook for 16p ad infinitum. <sighs> you know what? And then I'm gonna have to do the exact same thing here, I think, where I just leave it and then I have to send an email myself and demand back the money for, for time that has been spent sat in a parking bay. And you know, some number of people won't do that. They are making money on these buggy app slash GPS functions. Or maybe it's all a ploy to make people favor um, making them more legal. I, you know, I, the way that, that wouldn't make any sense. Maybe it's a ploy to just make people mad. And if people get mad, they'll make e-scooters legal. There we go. That's, that's genius thinking right there. But yeah, I spent 16 minutes, 15 times 16p. I can't, I can't show you right now. But that'd be about um, two pound forty plus a one pound unlock fee. But I didn't pay the one pound unlock fee because I got Lime Prime. Just in case I want to make a ton of video uh, scooter videos. And now I made it from where was that? Like somewhere south of London Bridge to the city of London, Basinghall Street. Always wanted to go to Basinghall Street, and now I'm finally here. Um, but yeah, things things operate in a very weird way sometimes. Um, uh, like we make arguments to protect people and really we use protection as a way to hurt people and that's why I think speaking on behalf of other people is like one of those things that is like questionable at best people love when they have like a group of people that are like you know weak weaker than them that they can speak on behalf of and say these insane things that they heard one person from that whole group say and be like this is the best way to protect the group and it's like actually the best way to treat you know to help any group is to remember that it's a group of individuals <laughs> and uh you know like hurting a lot of individuals uh, helping a lot of individuals is better than trying to help some nebulous concept of group but maybe i'm wrong maybe maybe you think that you're not an individual you're actually defined by your uh all the your sexuality gender uh race um clothing choice your, your occupation and your i don't know like the, the 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 your favorite minecraft block and whether you think the ender dragon actually exists or whether whether you're, you're dumb and you haven't really played the game too much but you want to seem informed who knows for sure all i know is i hope you'll enjoy this third channel video and i'll see you all probably never again <laughs> this is where they, they 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 disappear me i'm just kidding but uh this i hope you all enjoyed have a nice day and i'll see you next time Goodbye. Look at this pigeon over here. I'm gonna go pet the pigeon. Is he okay? He's okay. He was just laying down the road because he's got a death wish. Okay, goodbye.